Love Lessons, the show where healthy couples come to share their wisdom from the lessons they've learned in love. We discuss everything from money to parenting to social media and don't leave out stress and sex. Go get your pen and paper because class is now in session. Come catch your blessings. Welcome to Love Lessons, hosted by Trey Kearney. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Love Lessons. Woo-wee! Tonight is going to be a good night. Trust me. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome. We're here every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tonight, I am really, really super duper excited about my guests, Raheem and Deja Allen. I am really excited about them because they were a blessing in my life long, long, long ago. So let me tell you a little bit about backstory. We met when I lived in I won't say the town because I don't want people to know where they live, but I was their upstairs neighbor. And this is why I love them. And it is Autism Awareness Month. And I got on my blue. And this is why I love the Allens. Jermaine was small and loud and jumping and bumping over their head. And it was really nothing I could do about it because he has autism. So to tell him to sit down is like talking to a brick wall. And I would ask them, you know, if he's jumping around too much, let me know, let me know. And I hear so many stories of parents who are being harassed by neighbors, upstairs neighbors, calling the police on them because the kid is too loud, the kid is jumping. And I just love and honor them because they were so understanding and compassionate in my time of need. And, you know, I tried to take them upstairs to the third floor after, you know, at nine o'clock, but they were like, no, it's okay, we're good. So I just wanted to publicly thank them on Autism Awareness Month to say that nobody understands how hard it is to have a child on the spectrum and to have neighbors downstairs when it's your only option. And for them to just show that love and support and to just never complain, I just, I really appreciate you guys. Thank y'all so much. We love you. We love you. We love you so much. (laughs) Y'all just don't know that that I hear horror stories. It wasn't even... It wasn't like a all. thought. It was <laughs> it like, wasn't. that's what we understood. It wasn't mm-hmm. even like, oh, how should we handle this? It's like, he's a child. Number one, he's a child. Exactly. All children are loud. All children make noise. <laughs> and of course, being sensitive to the fact that he's autistic. Of course. Mm-hmm. But it, but the horror stories that I hear about neighbors, it's, exactly. you, would, you wouldn't believe the people who are not understanding or compassionate or mm-hmm. empathetic they just like calling the police y'all need to move like it's really a hateful world we live in so i really appreciated y'all from that moment on because i'm like I, and i could feel him because he shaked the house now, i'm glad he knows <laughs> he now with that boy now but your <laughs> compassion empathy and understanding will never ever 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 be forgotten by my family so Amen. Amen. i love y'all Amen. so Welcome, welcome, welcome. I love y'all. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us, Trey. So we're going to jump right in this, right? We're going to jump right in this. First, tell everybody how long have you guys been married? Okay. We've been married for 13 years. We're about to um, celebrate our anniversary next month, May 9th. It's going to be... uh, It's going to be, what, 14 years, right? Yeah. Crazy, right? It's going to be 14 Mm -hmm. years that we've been, you know, married and, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been, a roller coaster. <laughs> right. But we, yeah, right. Here, but we committed. But we committed. Mm-hmm. And it's funny that you said it's been a go ahead, Deja. I just can't believe it. Yeah. 14 years. It doesn't feel like That's that. So true, yeah. doesn't, right? mm-mm, mm-mm. Wow. And I I I was um coaching someone yesterday and he said, um, marriage is a roller coaster. And he said, This this is what he said. I meant to quote him on this on Facebook or Instagram, but I'm gonna do it after this. He said, Marriage is the best roller coaster ride I ever been on. That's the, mm. that's I said, the, wow. I said that, that, isn't that isn't that beautiful? Or you just said it's a roller coaster. And yeah, so my first yeah. question to all my couples is tell me a little bit about your blueprint, how you grew up. Tell me about your relationship with your mom and your dad. And we'll start with ladies first. Just tell me a little bit about your upbringing, what that looks like. Huh. Wow. Well, I would say <clears throat> I had a challenging upbringing um, yeah. in the sense that I, I was a child of uh, divorce, so that was pretty traumatic. Um, I'm I'm an only child, so it was just me. Once my once my parents separated and then divorced, it was just me and my mom in the house. And 
<clears throat> I was very close with my father. So I, it was very hard for me um, seeing them break apart um, and not having my dad in the house anymore. That was extremely hard because I was a daddy's girl. He oh, and I were, were very close, we were buddies. So to not have him there every day was really tough. So I would say up until the point that my parents separated, um, things were pretty good. But then when that happened, it just kind of, my world kind of just like fell apart. Um, my mother was also very much affected by their breakup. Um, she went through her own, you know, emotional issues. So that affected her, but of course, but it also affected me. And then I was going through my own stuff of not having him there. So that, you know, happened when I was about eight years old when they separated. So I, those years were really, 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 really tough for me, like eight and on. Um, I don't think that either one of my parents really recovered from their divorce. Wow. Um, neither one of my parents remarried. It's really weird in the sense I, I feel like most couples end up remarrying at least one of them. Neither one of my parents ever remarried. So it was, you know, just um, that's just how it was. I kind of wish like one of you remarried so I could have, like, you know, a brother or sister. I always felt <clears throat> pretty lonely being an only child and not to say I didn't have friends. I did have some close friends growing up and and um, my best friends whose families really embraced me and loved me, but I still always longed for, you know, having a sibling of my own to be in the house with me to share kind of that space with me. So um, my mother was very big on education. So that was really like my focus growing up. She made sure I was on top of my schoolwork. She put me in good schools. And so that's kind of where I put my focus was academics. And I worked. I worked since the age of 14. I've always been a hard worker. I've always had to kind of. Wow. Yeah. Um, I was not. A lot of people think that if you are a only child, you're spoiled. But I, I absolutely was not spoiled at all. Um, my mom was pretty much like, if you want anything extra, then you have to earn some money. You know, you want to go oh. here, you want to go there. You want to buy some clothes. You want to go to the movies make the money she's like i have i'm taking i have a, i'm putting a roof over your head i'm giving you food um you're going to school she was like that's what i have to do so <laughs> so i've wow. been working since the age of 14 i've never really stopped working since that age so i've always wow. had to earn my keep i love it thank you for being so transparent oh my goodness oh my listen we're gonna get back to that because that daddy leaving and that we gonna talk about that so raheem tell us about how you were raised tell us about your relationship with your mom and your dad so i um was raised by my mother only um, my father and my mother they they came together you know just to create me so i never really lived in a home with my father so i basically lived with my mother and my two sisters and i was the only i was the only man and i was the um youngest so basically i grew up um unbelievably spoiled you know i tell my mother me and my mother and i we're unbelievably close and i told her that she actually almost loved me to death literally mm. so um i grew up really just being pampered and catered catered to as the um the only boy and the youngest and was spoiled so basically i learned at an early age um just to manipulate in my way and to get what i wanted and then in the home with all women, I kind of like, you know, just kind of, you know, really started just taking advantage of my mother, of, of my mother's love, of her kindness, of her um, commitment towards me. And, you know, it was just rough. And my father and I, we met, well, we, I think I saw him when I was young a couple of times that I, that I remember, but then we reconnected when I was 13. And then um, we reconnected, just talking on the phone, but then we really established a solid relationship when I was 23. And that's when I, you know, he actually is interesting because he actually um, not introduced me to God, but helped me to um, just solidify my relationship with God and my love for books, my love for reading. He um, blessed me with um, some books that I've read. That's why behind us, you see 
books. They're they're not they're not props. I actually read them. So he, <laughs> I think I thank God for that that he helped me with that. And you know I grew up uh, under uh, uh, extreme underachiever because being that I was just manipulating my way through life, it really didn't pan out until I got older. So it's been a learning process, and I'm still learning even today. About to be 50 in, in 11 days, but I'm still learning. Wow. Whoa. That was, whoa, Deja. Whoa. Like to hear that, the because when we come together, we're, we've come from a different lens, right? So when we start to see behaviors from each other, it's like, yo, this chick is crazy, or yo, this dude is crazy. But the <laughs> fact of when we know each other's backstory, it's like, okay, I can have some grace and mercy because we both been through some things, you know, oh, I, you're the yeah. only child and you're the youngest spoiled child. So to come together, mm -hmm. it's like, I was looking for something a little different, but I'm glad I got what I got. So now that we talked about that, let's talk about, should divorce ever be an option? And do you guys have deal breakers or non-negotiables? <laughs> so, 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 so the interesting part is, um, you know, we're actually, um, just to be real and just to let everybody know that we are like, you know, really um, want to be transparent as possible, but we are in the process of like, you know, in ex uh, extreme counseling right now, because some sometimes our differences can cause us to look in that direction. But one thing that we have uh, committed to making sure that we do is to make sure that we stay committed because we have been married for um, 13 years, but we've been through a lot. And as we just said in our um, introductions, sometimes the way that we're raised can cause a lot of um, trauma in in a relationship. So the I'm not going to, well, yeah, the trick of the enemy is to have us to look at each other as enemies instead of uh, putting our backs towards each other and fight the enemy that's trying to attack what we have together. Because one thing that we, um, even when I put up the post and not to like, you know, just spread everything, but I said, we have been through the fire and we are going through the fire. But one thing that we're doing is that we're making sure that we're committing to each other. So divorce is something that pop, pops his head up, but we always knock, knock it right back down mm -hmm. every time it mm -hmm. comes up. I just wanted to add to that. Um, one of the first so we we had to do premarital counseling um through our church and the counselor that we met at that time is an amazing counselor um and i remember one of the things i remember him saying yeah. right you know in the beginning was there's no back there's no back door and like i never i never forgot that he told us that like That's true. he kind of told us like don't even mention that and i mean for the most part we have <laughs> heeded his advice yeah, there's definitely have been times where we like, oh my goodness, you know, like Raheem was saying, and there's times that it it, it goes through my head like, oh, this this man is driving me absolutely crazy. Can mm -hmm. I take this any longer? Exactly. You know, I question. But then I think to myself, well, well, even to answer your question is, um, you know, is it ever okay? I mean, I can't answer for other people. You know, every person has to kind of come every couple has to decide what their deal breakers are you know but I mean definitely I would say when there's any like abuse going on you know that um could be a definite yeah, yeah. deal breaker depending on if the person that is the abuser is willing to get help for their issues and willing to make a change well, I'm not even going to say it's absolutely you know it depends on that situation but I, you know that would be I would say for me, <clears throat> any kind of physical abuse would be a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, for, right. for one of us, honestly, yeah. you know, Raheem would not take me putting my hands on him and I wouldn't take him putting his hands on me. Um, that to me is probably mm -hmm. the but, deal breaker for me. Yeah. But the other the other thing is that um, I believe that deal breakers is when we can't really um, heed the other person's request. You know what I mean? Like sometimes like you can't heed every every last request because that's unrealistic expectations. But when you get to the point where you are constantly and consistently requesting um, changes, 
um, not making nobody over, but um, DJ actually said this through our talk before this, who I married is somebody different 14 years later and who she married mm. is somebody 14 years later. You know what I mean? And it was something that was unbelievably profound because um, like I said, we're in counseling now and this was real deep when we um, started reading this devotional called Love There. And the Love There, you had one of the sessions, one of the sessions they had us write the things that we hate about our spouse, right? And then we had to put it in the journal and put it away. And some of the things that Deja wrote in there was like unbelievable because Thank everything, yeah, because <clears throat> everything changed and everything got better. So we give God praise because at that particular time we were looking towards divorce. You know what I mean? And then when we started doing love there, everything changed. So um, that was like years ago, right? Right, right. And so we had like, done the wow. love there like in the beginning of our marriage. So yeah. we just recently restarted it and I had the paper in there from, you know, the first time that yeah. the I never, you know, it was just in wow. there. Like, oh my goodness. Look what look what laughing. I found. And yeah. it was so funny because it was like, these are all the things. I think it was things that we wanted to change. To change. Yeah. And I looked at the list and it was it was funny <laughs> that we could actually laugh and about it. You know, this many years later, like look at all these things I wrote down and look at how many things have change. actually changed. But the funny thing is, it's like it took a long time. It did. Took years. Can you say that again? Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me just say this to the people who are listening, who are at the brink of leaving, mm -hmm. and think that it's supposed to be. You know, people. They see these couple. I mean, we talked about this before we came on. All these couples' goals, and they think people. All this glitter. It. All that glitters is not gold. Like Deja just said, it took a long time to yes. get from that page absolutely to this chapter of life. Continue, yeah. please. There are things that I have been praying for since the beginning of our marriage that just recently came to pass. We're talking about 13 years. Mm. And I'm like, oh, wow, God, you were listening. You know, like this is an answered prayer 13 years later. Mm. <laughs> you know, so that's just a reminder of like, well, don't stop and don't think that God is not listening to your request because he is. But we don't control the timing on when these things you know, when our prayers get answered. And mm -hmm. we also don't get to control how our prayers get answered. You know, mm -hmm. so patience is, I really do believe is important to be in this thing for the long haul because it's a long journey. It is a mm -hmm. long, it's, a, it's, I mean, it should be I, a lifelong journey that we're on and it requires so much patience. And I'm even, you know, talking to myself right now because you know there's things I want right now you know right. there's things I have right now that I want to be answered and even hearing myself say oh it took this many years that's a reminder to me well think about how long it took for you to get this that and the other and it's not just about getting but you know what I mean it's like yes I believe God hears, hears our prayers and mm -hmm. he answered in his time but what is he doing with us in the time that we're waiting you know he is doing something within us it's not all about wanting the other person to change but god wants us to change right mm -hmm. while we're waiting there's a lot that he's doing within us <laughs> come on pastor i'm sorry come on, come on. you better <laughs> preach i love this because you y'all are like y'all making me emotional because so many people are so willing to give up. And we live in this microwave society where people want what they want. And if they don't get what they want, they'll move on to the next person only to take the same problem with them to the next person, only right. to take the same problem with them to the next person, because right. you're going to have to compromise. Even if you left, mm -hmm. you're going to end up with somebody else with the right. same you, right? And mm -hmm. you said, after 14 years, I'm with a different person. And I have to mm -hmm. say this. Oh, yeah. I've seen your growth as a woman. You yeah. you were really shy, meek. And I'm yeah. not saying that you're not now, but you mm -hmm. have totally evolved into, I would never have expected you to say yes from the person you were back then when I knew you <laughs> to come on here and do this. So I just want people to know that this is, four, this is 13 years <laughs> later in a marriage. This woman yes. has evolved into her own person and yeah. found herself and i'm i'm just really proud of you to see that like i'm just really like 
yeah. elated just to see your glow, right? Yeah. Because I knew you back when you were like, I'm going to start, you know, um, a nutrition thing, but, mm -hmm. but no, but no, I'm not. Yeah. I can't do lives like, but now uh, yeah. to have you on here and, and again, let's talk about speaking and let's talk about submission first, right? Because a lot of people have a problem with that word and it, it, it becomes an argument in the home. It becomes a, a, a conversation, an argument with people conversate, uh, oh, submission. So give me your take on the word submission and how does that work in your home? Yeah, what I what I have what I have found because that's been a really um, contentious point. But one thing that I have learned is that um, a woman can't really submit if the vision is not clear. What? You know, so basically, <laughs> like you have to you have to have a mission. So for um, I'm gonna say for a lot for a, a long time in our marriage, I can honestly say I was like scatterbrained. You know what I mean? So, but I was scatterbrained, but I was. Uh, actually demanding. Yes, I was. I was demanding submission. So she's like, what? If I submit to you, I don't know what's going to happen. So I can't hey, trust. Cool. So it was like, you know, a contentious point because, yeah, it's in the Bible. And I was trying to, like, you know, use that as uh, something that I can hold weight. But um, I believe that in order for a woman to submit that a man and I'm and I'm learning this because I'm because I don't have it. I don't have it all down back yet. I can't even say that, but I am learning to let her see my vision. And she did see things come to pass. Mm -hmm. But also, I have to love her to submission. I can't tell her to submit and try to beat her into submission, not physically, but even verbally. You know what I'm saying? Even mentally. You know what I mean? So I'm learning how to even learn how to have my wife submit to me because I think it was it was it was deep because the other day we had a conversation because I was listening to something and I said man I'm a horrible leader you know what I mean and the reason why I said that was because uh, I said because I asked her like when I asked her to do certain things that I believe that will benefit us she kind of like you know um, fight against me and um, the um, the gentleman who was teaching on leadership said if you are a good leader you don't have to fight anybody to uh follow you you're teaching mm. them to follow you so i said man i have a lot to learn so submission is big but i have to learn how to love mm -hmm. her to submission and have a clear vision mm -hmm. yeah i mean submission is absolutely something that has not been easy for me <laughs> at all like i you know just going back a little bit even into like my upbringing i my in marriage and like how you how you even talked about me like just evolving when i got married i really did not know anything about marriage um i didn't have you know as i said my parents were divorced i didn't really have too many other um role models like even though i wasn't so young in age i was 28 you might think that oh that's a mature I was very a young 28 because just the way just just the way my life was I didn't have a whole lot of relationships mm -hmm. up to that point so I call, I would call myself a very young 28 year old mm -hmm. um and I oh I've ha had a lot to learn and you know still learning um but submission I'm like what is that you know <laughs> um and yeah throughout my marriage throughout our marriage that has been hard for me and it's so funny Trey like even what you said about having me on here you know i am i am an introvert there's no doubt about that i'm a natural introvert um i have but raheem is the one that said oh trey invited us and we're going on you know <laughs> and i was just like i didn't fight you know in inside i'm like mm, i don't know i don't know you know you know how i am being on camera i don't love it you know all that but i just she did. I didn't fight it. So come on, Jesus. I just Amen. I did not fight, even though Amen. inside of me I wanted to like be like, no, 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 no. I said okay. Amen. You said we're going on. We're gonna go on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know that's my growth. <laughs> there, yeah, yeah. There's my growth. I'm like I can't yeah. fight everything here. <laughs> you know, true. there's that submission. There's that submission. I have to my inner because even though I'm an introvert and even though I am, you know, soft and gentle, I. 
I, you know, Raheem will tell you, I, I, I definitely have strong opinions. Yeah. I have very strong opinions and I'm not afraid to say them within my household <laughs> at all. So. See, but the blessing, the blessing, <laughs> the, ble the blessing of it is that um, you hear her, right? You hear her? She is gone. Yep. So I said, whenever that light comes on, even though it's hard for her to um, do it, when she's on, she's on. And yes. That's what I'm telling her. You know, she's shining. Yeah. He has Big really time. pushed me. He has helped to push me out there. I do I, I do give him so much credit for that uh, because mm -hmm. I am naturally an introvert and I am naturally, you know, I don't, I don't know if I would call myself shy, but an introvert. Like, you know, I don't want to be in front of the camera, <laughs> but, you know, no, I have a shyness mm -hmm. about me and, but I realize that um, I have a lot within me and I just, Big time. I've been through a lot in my life. Um, and I want to use it for good, you know. God's given me a, a lot of dreams, and 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 I, I just feel like all that I've been through has to be for something. Yes. You know? mm. All that I've been through has to be for something. Come on, I'm getting ready to leave because you know what? I can't. <laughs> no, this is really really good. Like I come, I do this every week. This is y'all are session number five. And every week I really learn something about myself, right? Mm -hmm. Everything I've been through, it is for something and it's for somebody. And I just appreciate yeah. your transparency. Yeah. Let's talk about money in marriage. So they say money is the root of all evil. I have seen some marriages dissolve because of money. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. folks be crazy about, you know, because we don't want to talk about the Will Smith situation or whatever. But for me, <laughs> they say, you know, protect black women, women want to be protected. I think women more so want to feel secure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're not fighting for you to go outside and beat the brakes off of somebody. We're mm -hmm. actually fighting because we want to feel secure in mm -hmm. our home and in our heart and in our health yeah. and in our, men in, in our mental state. So look, let me tell me how you guys deal with money, mm -hmm. money issues and mm -hmm. just money as the topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 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 that's the area that I'm definitely, you know, um, perfecting in this time. So when we when we first got together, it was really bad. It was really bad. But you know, we have like definitely been a, a one a one eighty economically mm -hmm. because what I did was I got some necessary training that I needed to get um, for my career to help me to position myself um, economically to secure her and uh, well to secure her and and my family. Because a lot of times I was just like, you know, um, being that I didn't, you know, learn about money when I was younger, I had to learn on the fly. And learning on the fly was inside of my marriage. So um, in the beginning, Deja handled all the money, you know, I, and, and, I, and I submitted to that because I knew that, you know, she was better at it. And then, you know, I used to let her just handle everything. And then it got to the point where like, you know, um, when when she had the kids, well, when we had the kids, her focus went to the kids and then kind of the money situation came on me. And I just thank God that he's that he's positioning me and positioned me to get better with finances. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we're really like, you know, that's the area that we're working on heavy right now to get even better with finances. Because I had like, you know, what I've been doing, I've been like, you know, putting money aside in different accounts and it's been working out big time. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we are working towards to get yeah. to the point that we're really striving in that area. Like Deja's business, my business, you know, and I'm really in the um, furthest, at, furthest as I've ever been as far as establishing a company. And I believe that this is going to take us to another level. So I believe that um as far as finances we have to get right there because the more money comes in we have to be able to manage it better mm -hmm. so now that's what we're doing now which is yeah. a blessing yeah that, that was one of the things that was on that list yeah that was that was deep <laughs> that we talked about like lord yeah it was um, crazy. and that was one of the things like when yeah. he said a 180 so that a was an answer prayer that took some time took some time um mm -hmm. yeah it took some time yeah. and i would say also like i think one good thing about us, uh, not one good thing, but one yeah. of the good things about our, us and our finances is we always like put our money together, together. from the beginning. I mean, and every couple has to decide, you know, what's going to work best for them. Yeah. I'm not saying everyone should do that, mm -hmm. but um, I think it it worked well for us. Big so time. even even times where 
I had more money coming in. Yes. You know, I was never like, that's well, money. that's my money, you know, and because yeah. guess what? Now, when it's the other, when the situation flips around, I don't want him to be like, <laughs> that's mine. You that's know, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> I'm like, it's always been our always. money. It's always been our money. Always. When we had a little, when we had always. a lot, it's always been just all always. ours. Always, yeah. My money is her. Mm. Ooh, it's always been our money. I hope y'all yeah. listening. If you just tuned in, you're tuned into Love Lessons. I hope you will have your pen and your paper because class is in session. Our instructors, Raheem and Deja Allen, are really, really teaching tonight and from a place of transparency. And I believe this is one, this is my mantra truth plus transparency equals healing. Yeah. Not only yeah. our own healing, but the healing of other people, other marriages who are couples who are listening right now who are struggling with some things to hear you say, we're in counseling right now, oh, right? Because yeah. we want to maintain, remain, and sustain our marriage. We'll go get an oil change, but we won't go and get counseling, oh, yeah. or we time. won't go get help for our marriage. Would you want oh, to yeah. say something, Deja? No, just we're big believers in counseling. Yeah. I mean, and I think I, I'm thankful for that. We've yeah. always, <laughs> like, we've always, I have, in. I go individual counseling, oh, individual. Raheem has throughout, you know, the course of his life, like we just believe in counseling. It's like you said, I just think it's, it's ha taking care of yourself. You know, mm -hmm. we have to take care of ourselves in whatever ways we need to do that. We need to do that. And, you know, the things that, you know, what's going on in our minds, what's going on in our hearts, you can't see that. That doesn't mean it's, it's, it's not important. Just mm -hmm. like you will go to the doctor for a cut, a bruise or whatever, go to counseling and I just think that I, I want to do it forever because I feel like it, it can only even when things are good it could only make you better there's Big always going to be issues that we have to encounter life is life I mean life is hard life is challenging marriage raising children the world is crazy dealing with all the things that we have to deal with it is I just think it's so beneficial to have like a neutral um person to talk to and so yes. I, mm -hmm. I love, you know, I love my counselor and it's helped me so much, you Big know, time. as a, as a woman, part of who it's helped me to be the woman that I am today, mm -hmm. you know, going to mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. Come on now, y'all, y'all better get some therapy. Y'all better get y'all life right. Some of y'all <laughs> out here, some of out here resisting. And you just mm -hmm. need help. Nobody's judging you because you go to a therapist. Nobody's judging you because you go to premarital counseling. There's so many couples that are going into marriages and not having premarital counseling to have the real conversation. How are we going to deal with money? How do you deal with anger? Do you want children? Do you beat your children? Do you scream at your children? How were you raised? So we get into these relationships where we did not go do the pre-work. Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of being proactive, now we got to be reactive and, and our marriage is falling apart or our relationship. And we're talking about marriage right now. Please, if you are about to go down the aisle, go get you some premarital counseling and have a real conversation about mm -hmm. some things that you really. And, and the first thing I want you to do together as co any couple that's listening, that's about to get married, any couple that thinks they want to get married. I want you to sit down and have a conversation and ask your mate your future husband, wife, engaged, boyfriend, boo, bae. How were you raised? Where your daddy at? Where your mama at? Do you mm -hmm. love your mother? Do you love your father? So I want, I really want y'all to have this conversation. So let's talk about, let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk <laughs> about you and me. So yeah. let's talk about sex and kids because we know as women, and maybe you don't know Raheem because you ain't a woman, but as women, not only does our physical body change, but our mind changes, our hormones go crazy. Sometimes, and I'm gonna be real frank, we get some vaginal dryness. Some things <laughs> happen to us. And with men of a certain age getting into 50, sometimes the thing's not up like it used to be. If it's up, then it's up, then it's up, then it's up. But sometimes <laughs> it's not. So how do you deal with that when you have the children and you're still trying to keep the romance alive? <laughs> um you know i'll say i've grown i've just grown like i like i said we've said this i'm not the same person that i was you know when we married and and i've evolved as as, as he has evolved but i even had to learn like i am telling you 
I really was clueless when I got married, when we got married, I really was. And my mom, you know, my mom didn't, we didn't have these kind of, we didn't have conversations about any, we didn't talk about sex. We didn't, we didn't talk about any of that. Um, the conversations I had with like, were with friends, you know, um, never. So um, everything was just, I just learned on the go. Mm. Um, and I didn't understand. I didn't know. I didn't understand like men's sexual needs when I, I didn't understand. Like I've learned that over the years. Mm. And I would say I've gotten better with understanding that over the years. Like, wow, that this is like not a want. This is a need, mm -hmm. you know? Oh. Um, I didn't understand that fully, you know? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've come a long way in understanding that and realizing like, this is a need that I can meet. And it's not like, it's not, I, as a woman, like our, you know, sex drives definitely don't, they don't match, you know, like I'm, I don't have, I'll just say like, I don't have a high sex drive, but like, it doesn't matter. Cause if my husband does, then I mean, that's my, my role. I'm saying that's my job, right. To fulfill that need, like he's not supposed to get it anywhere else. So, um, mm. Come on, sister. Mm -hmm. I've learned that. Yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The trans. Hold on. Let me. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. The transparency tonight. I love. I really love y'all because mm -hmm. this is real talk. Like everybody don't have the same sex drive, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like she said. I had to learn that it's not that he wants it. It's a need, mm -hmm. and it's not that I. I, I don't. I, I need him to be faithful, so I have to do what I need to do that my need is being met through his need being met. Mm -hmm. Come on, Jesus. Come, come not, on. not only do I want to, can I say one more thing? Not only do yes, I want to, please. I also want him to be happy. And <laughs> I see a difference. Like, I'm not lying. Like, we joke, we actually joke about it. Like, wow, I could, you, I could tell you, you know, you got some last night because you got <laughs> smiling today. You're laughing. Like, and it makes me feel good because I want my husband to be happy. I don't want him to be miserable and cranky. So if I could do something to make him have a little pep in his step, well, why, you know, why not? <laughs> That's gonna benefit me too. I don't want to be around to crank you cranky, you know. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. That's so true. That's so true. I was telling, I was telling, we need uh, you to speak on speak on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, the blessing, the blessing is that definitely, like you know, it was, it was, it was a blessing because when we, when we got married, we didn't have premarital sex, which was, which was, which was great, you know what I mean? Because when, so when we first got married, we didn't have children, so and we, and we, and we dated for years, like we dated for a long time too. We, we dated did. for like I don't know how many years. We dated for like I think five, six, five, yeah, five, like five dating years. and engagement was like yeah, five, five or six years. years. And y'all ain't sleep together. No, no, we didn't. We didn't. So, so no, it was. So it not. was like. So when we, <laughs> so when no. we first started, it was like you know. I mean, not to get graphic, but we was like learning each other. He was talking, like talking, talking through everything, and it was just like because you know, um, pre 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 salvation, I was like you know a wild boy. I was really out there. So, but then when I got saved, like God really like you know helped me out in that area. So I wasn't like going there at all, you know what I mean? So then when we got together, I told her when we first met, I said, yeah, I don't want to have sex with my wife. You know what I mean? So when things- With so, my wife to be, yeah, right? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So so I told her that. I said, I said, I said yeah, I don't want to have sex with, <clears throat> with, 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 with my wife. So then, you know, when we started like kissing and everything, and then when things got a little intense, you know, I thank God that she said, she, she said to me, not saying that she was with it at all, but she said, but you said you're not going, she said, you not, you, you told me that you didn't want to have sex with your, with your wife. And I said, yes. And that calmed me all the way down. So things got hot and heavy, but we never went there. So then when we got married, it was like, we was, we was going in, but then that's when life happened. And then things just started going to rock. And now we just like really making our way to that point of, establishing a real strong sex life right now which is a blessing because it was funny it was it was it was it was kind of hilarious can i tell the way what i said yesterday 
Mm-hmm. I mean, this mm-hmm. is live, but anyway. So, so <laughs> yesterday, so yesterday, I had a, um, I had a claim in Jersey City. So I'm walk, walking down the street, and I just was singing, right? So I called and I said, "Girl, you got me singing walking down the street." <laughs> And I was laughing like, oh, my God, you know what I mean? But it was so funny because before I left, just to be real, before before I left, I was like, nah, nah, I got to go to a plane. You know what I mean? So she was like, no, we going to do it right now. But now she hit me. She hit me. She hit me. So then I was like, nah, nah, nah. But then, you know, she kind of enticed me. So I was like, all right. And then I'm walking down the street singing. And it was just <laughs> <laughs> it was just fun. I mean, and that's the thing, you know, when you have children, and it wasn't it's here, like that's why. they weren't here. So yeah. I just feel like it's not easy. It's not easy. It's that's true. To make time for each other, just in general with children. Mm. And that's something that we're really working on. Like that's just true. even dating, you know, like going out and because our kids are just always, it seems like they're always with us that's when we're true. together. But you just have to kind of find the time, like mm-hmm. whenever you can. That's pretty much what it is. Like, yeah. um, and yesterday you were hitting yours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, oh, I know that's I know that's a lie from the pit because you got the these kids ain't here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Oh this is every, every one. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. This I was laughing one. so hard. <laughs> Got him singing in down the street, and it was raining. Got him singing in the rain. I know. Now he's singing through the streets. Let's talk about. Now this is a touchy topic too. So male and female friends, is it okay for your significant other, for your spouse, to get advice from a woman, and is it okay for your wife to get advice or share information? with a male friend, how does that work in your home? Because we've yes. got so many different answers from different couples, the dynamic of how it works in their home. How mm-hmm. does that work in your home? Because I just want other couples to understand that it's not, marriage is not cookie cutter, but you have to make sure you're honoring your partner. So talk mm-hmm. about male and female friends. Yeah, it was just like one of one of my, because I have because I have female, female friends, but one thing that I have established is that, um, I always want my female friends to be friends with Deja. So I won't even listen to them if they're not friends with her. And that's just really basically, I know mm-hmm. that's short, that's <clears throat> that's short and sweet. But if they're just my friend and they're not her friend, that's kind of sketchy. So I don't even talk to them like that because then that's the possibility of something going awry. So I don't do that. And all my all my female friends who I have for decades, they're Deja's friend as well. And I make yeah. sure of that. Yeah, I'm 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 very uh, careful about who I speak to. Like, Big time. um, right now, like I'm thinking of one male friend that I have that I do talk to, but he's actually both of our friends. Yeah. So we're just we try to be careful to talk to people that we know love us both. Exactly. That's really important to us. We don't right. want to talk to someone that hates my husband and it's like I can't <laughs> trust your, you know, not exactly. to, I can't trust that advice from someone who doesn't like my husband. So I talk to people that. I know want the best for me and him. Like exactly. literally the guy friend that I was think, thinking about, he's both of our friends. We both talk to him mm-hmm. and also um, his wife. Like his we is a couple and we, they're, you know, a couple that we trust. So we know mm-hmm. they only want the best for us. So big time. Um, mm. I wouldn't, I, I couldn't think of anyone else that I would actually talk to. Just Shannon. Um, Shannon. Right. Shannon like, like really yeah. openly. Um, because they don't know him as well. They exactly. they need to really. I need to know that they don't have anything against him. That's I love important. it. Let's talk about fair fighting, right? We mm-hmm. we we ain't it ain't it ain't always gonna be good. Isn't it's just not gonna be good. Mm-hmm. So how do you guys deal with anger and 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 fair fighting? There's a fair way to fight, and then there's dirty dog underground. I stuff so talk mm-hmm. about that a little bit DJ's one of the sweetest people i know to be honest even when she, you know, i mean i mean i'm not trying to like you know just say that so D, you Aww. can't like like DJ's, somebody get them tonight i'm sorry <laughs> get them DJ, um DJ goes off like this this is how she goes this 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 is how she's going off so when you're talking about anger it's like it's kind of like you know 
her niceness kind of get me mad because then I could fly off the handle. You know what I mean? So I go off. Like, well, I used to go off. I don't go off as bad as I used to go off, but I have an anger streak in me. You know what I mean? That's like, you know, can kind of slice her like heavy. So I'm learning how to um, get better with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm in a men's group every week. And I'm in, and, and that's why I'm in um, Activate Nation. You know what I yes. mean? So I can make sure that I learn how to move differently. And even offline, me and David Burris, he tells me straight, he keep it real with me. Like, yo, you got to change. You know what I mean? And that's just that. You know, he keeps it real. So um, I'm more edgy, you know what I mean? And then when I get too edgy, Deja goes inward. And that's the challenging part. So I have to learn how to take the edge off. What about um, you, Deja? We, well, one thing I was thinking is that um, we, like, we don't curse. Like, we don't, I mean, I'm not Hard saying we don't. Times disrespect each other we there mean in an argument we can feel disrespected yeah. but we don't we don't we do have boundaries like we do not curse each other out we do not call each other names like we have those we've kind of established that from the beginning like we don't do that um as raheem said he definitely has <laughs> and you know uh, uh edgy. Legit, edgy, edgy he has edgy, a, he yeah. has some anger issues i would say and i'm just more generally calm <laughs> <laughs> that's just my nature you know so not to say i don't raise my voice not to say i do not get angry i do of course i'm, I'm human but i just kind of um just a little Very bit crazy, more yeah. composed when i'm in an argument whereas he's just oof, <laughs> like a like a like a teapot that just you know yeah. <laughs> he, can be very, he can be very explosive yeah, um true. and i just yeah, I kind of shut down. And we we're actually, so as I mentioned, we were just going through the Love Dare recently. And one of the assignments was actually to come up with the list of like, oh, um, I forget boundaries. what they called it. Like just basically communication oh, kind of like, I think it was like rules of engagement. Yeah, and we actually is, um, engagement. came up with, like we had it, we just recently had a discussion about like what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. A lot of the stuff are things that we had been doing that we needed, we're like, we need to cut that out. Um, and we typed it up and actually my, my goal was to print it out and like put it up somewhere that we could see it as a reminder, constant reminder of like, these are, <laughs> these are the places that we will not go. Um, and what, like, for example, one of the things is like going to bed angry. Like I can easily like be, it's we can laugh about it now. Like I can go to bed any, in the middle of an argument, I can go to sleep. I'll be like, oh, finish this tomorrow, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and Raheem will be like hot and, you know, like, mm. I'm like, good night, you know? But I'm like, well, that's probably not a good thing. You know, going to bed, you know, angry with each other. It's best to kind of try to at least come to some, a place of peace, even though I don't think that every argument can be completely resolved necessarily by the end of the night, but at least like, okay, let's, let's both agree that all right, we're gonna leave it there and we'll pick it back up, you know, late tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, so that we can at least go to sleep in peace and not be tossing and turning all night. I don't toss and turn, but Raheem probably does. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I will say he's yeah, me, that's so you true. You know, so I don't play with that's so good. She said, I don't toss and turn because I'm good yeah. on that. I can wake up and resume tomorrow. Let's talk about <laughs> blended families, right? I know I know Raheem has some um older children, and blending families can be a struggle, you know, and sometimes not. How how was the blending of the family? Because I know you have adult children and, and babies. So how how did that balance out for you guys? And even blending your families, your your parents, and just your whole families. Mm -hmm. It has it hasn't really been hectic because they haven't lived with us. Right. So it's different. So now, like you know, even though I have children and I love them in life, it's like a totally different process. And then um, it's funny because we laugh, we laugh about it, but my wife and my daughter, they're in the same generation. You know what I mean? So it's like they're nine <laughs> years apart, nine yeah. years apart. And nine these are now apart. are eight, eight, years, eight apart. years apart. Years apart. And, wow. um, but the interesting part, the blessing is that um, she's our babysitter tomorrow because we're going on a day. Yeah. So yeah. basically they, um, it's been really, uh, from, my, from my seat, 
it's been a real yeah. smooth, smooth yeah. transition. No friction at all. No, no I, drama. The only drama was with um, the mother part. You know what I mean? On DJ's mother, mother part because she's very engaged and opinionated, and she, you don't, you don't, um, you can't, you don't have to guess what she's thinking. She's gonna tell you what she's thinking, and they say it like that. And then mm -hmm. sometimes it's, it's gotten real heavy with with her and I. Mm -hmm. Well, share. How, how do you deal with that, Deja, when it gets heavy with your husband and your mother? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> that's such a hard one. Um, I usually just tell, tell I kind of just rather if he just leaves it alone because I know I know how my mother is <laughs> and she can go. And yes, yeah, she's very opinionated. She's very strong. She's not going to change her opinion. So I just kind of feel like there's no point. There's no point in you engaging with that because it's just so basically your energy. So I really just usually encourage just leave it alone. You know, just don't even get into it. Sometimes he listens and sometimes he doesn't. I mean, and honestly, where we are now, uh, Raheem and my mom actually have a, yeah. a good relationship. Yeah. Like they don't have a bad relationship. Yeah, no. I take her. She he, to I take care of her because she don't have nobody, so I have to be there for yeah. her. But he will, you know, if she says something, I'll say something. He will say something back, yeah. you know. And she just kind of, I think she. It's funny, like we haven't had a discussion about it, but I think she just expects it. Yeah, she expects. Um, to say something back. Yeah. she expects. She knows. She knows how how it is. But mm -hmm. like, there have been arguments, but we've always recovered. Big time. Honestly, we've always recovered, and she's. My uh, like my mother, <laughs> she's my mom. I'm her only child. Um, our children are her only grandchildren. Yeah. She's you a, know, she's a great grandma. She's very involved in their lives. So, um, it is what it is, mm -hmm. you know. But I have my own way of dealing with her. <laughs> That's not your question, but um, yeah, no, I just good. Leave it. Just don't engage. You know. Mm -hmm. This is good. I, I that try to avoid, I'm trying to avoid arguments if you can. You know, the Bible says it's to live peaceably with one yeah. another as much as, I'm paraphrasing, as much as it, you can help it, right? And that's kind of my my stance is just try to keep the peace. And and then and then what I told my what I told my daughter, my mother, and my <clears throat> and my uh, sister, I told them Deja's position. So being that Deja is more of an um, introvert and she don't really like go in, and we're from where we're from. I had to tell them, listen, deal with her like this, so they know not to engage her in a way that can be intimidating. So I make sure right. that I, like, I'm not going to smack my my family, but I'm going to protect my wife, and I'm not going to let nobody make her feel edgewise. You know, mm. it's that. Mm. I love that. See, this is the blending of families because we have to deal with different personalities, like. I have to, you know, honor your mother and father and your days will be long. So I have to honor my mother. I don't want her disrespect you, but the best way to deal with this and and from your point of your standpoint, Raheem, to say to your family, hey, I got this. You got you got a problem. Come to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't don't overstep no boundaries because my wife comes first. Right. Exactly. And and a lot of times families don't do that. A exactly. lot of times there's chaos because of order. Right. The. Mm -hmm. The husband doesn't protect the wife. And I'm not saying we're supposed to let our wife or husband go crazy on our family, but this is our family. Mm -hmm. Me, you, and our two children under this roof, I have to make sure that is stable and happy, right? Mm -hmm. To make sure that everything's good so that we sleep good at night, right? Exactly. Right. That's okay, true. so I just need to, you know, because I just want people to understand that you, you have to put each other first, forsake all others. You have to. You and there's to. a lot of people that don't. You and that's to. that's where the fallout is. Let's talk yeah. about social media etiquette. Social media is crazy right now, right? Like mm -hmm. social media is nuts. Like people are crazy on social media. People will ruin your marriage on social media by default. Like people come in and say somebody says something, they ain't said nothing. How do you guys deal with social media etiquette? Do I I mean I mean uh I mean so so the interesting part. Um, the interesting part is, you know how they say it goes down in the DM. Yeah. You know I, mean? I think we talked about it on on one of your podcasts. I think with Men Hurts. You know yep. what I mean? And basically, it was a situation where somebody, you know, started like you know just coming in on social media, and it was really you know bad. So now what I do is 
is I make sure, even though before that, DJ had my passwords and everything anyway, but she just don't look at my stuff. So now when anybody say anything that's tricky, I show it, I show it to her. I make sure that she has complete, unbelievably access to everything that I have. So I won't get caught up in the situation. So somebody says something, remember that post somebody said mm -hmm. okay. god must have been paying attention oh, yeah. when he made you oh my god i'm like so i show her <laughs> and then i block her. you know yeah. what i mean so i block big time but i tell her everything yeah yep you always tell me oh look yeah. what this person said look what this person said look at this look um, at that i don't know what it is like i i mean he's on social media way more than i am typically and right now i'm really on social media more so for my business business mm -hmm. i've always been very like kind of <laughs> like a love hate relationship with yeah. social media sometimes i get on sometimes you know kind of how i feel but right now you know it's business and so i need to be on there um and i really haven't i personally haven't really had um any issues so i'm like is it like just women that are coming out i don't know maybe you could tell me trey like do you get a lot of men coming on saying crazy stuff i haven't experienced it up to this point <laughs> maybe did. because i'm just in. not there a lot and I, i'm only just kind of now really you know yeah. but we'll see what happens no, you're but right you're right these women out here like i i have these it's the women these you come okay on. so it's let's not just because i'm show. like he shows me stuff. I'm like, I don't have people saying this stuff to me. Like, I don't have, I have not had any crazy comments from mm. men. So mm. I was like, what is, mm. is it me? Is it like, I'm just not like, maybe yeah. they not do. <laughs> no. Mm. Mm. Or is it just a woman thing? Like, they just, whew, like, these women, <laughs> let, let's talk about that. Like, listen, let's just say this. I have a whole movement, hashtag no side chicken where I encourage women to honor guard and respect each other's relationships. And it's sad that these women know that Raheem is a married man and that they will shamefully come under his post and say some slick stuff and not expect to get smacked. Not that we smacking anybody, <laughs> but I'm just saying virtually you could get the smack down when you come up under somebody's husband's picture or in his DMs for a wife mm -hmm. to say, yo, you know, what's your problem? But then you right. would be insecure, but Again, social media etiquette. Let's just talk to the women now who are the single women and married women be in their DMs too. So let's just talk to all the women right now. Stay out of folks' DMs that you know is in the relationship because shame on you. You trifling. I said it and I meant it. We trying to save marriages over here. Stay out of people DMs when you yeah. know they married because yeah. you the problem. You a home worker. Mm -hmm. I said it. So let's, we're going to wrap it up now because we have like three minutes left. I want you guys to tell everybody about your businesses, where they can find you, how they can obtain your services, and what's next for you guys. Okay. So um, so right now I'm in the process of um, establishing a company called Allen Adjusters, where it's helping individuals become adjusters. And also, you know, I wrote two books, uh, From the Streets to the Sanctuary and How to Achieve Your Dreams and Demolish Your Deadlines and um for us we just i mean i just thank god for this opportunity i believe that we're going to take this as a springboard to help us move to the next um so i'm a certified health coach and so my i work primarily with women um i'm helping them to reach their, their health and wellness goals really any health and wellness goal that a woman has, I can work with them. I work with women one-on-one. -on -one. I also have done small group sessions. Yes. And um, right now I'm actually creating a new program that's focused on helping women, especially moms, um, deal with stress, overwhelm, and self-care. I'm really passionate about that. And um, so I'm really excited about the future of my business. And what's the name of the business? um let's journey to health let's journey to health, let's journey to health. Yes. yep so i'm on the journey with you let's journey to health yeah i love that i could see that on all kind of uh, merchandise with my t-shirt at i'm, I'm <laughs> buying that t-shirt tomorrow as soon as it's available i'm buying it all right i gotta get okay. me some t-shirts okay. that's excellent okay <laughs> let's journey to health but that's yeah. good stuff right there so yeah. um let us know where we can find you on social media what's your social media handles uh my i'm on instagram at health coach underscore deja um at health coach underscore deja is uh, and that's my I believe that's my facebook 
as well. Yeah. And I also have a website, letsjourneytohealth.com, which is going to be under some construction, but I do I do have it up and people can reach me there. Mm-hmm. And you can reach yeah. me at um, Raheem underscore Jamal. And also you can reach, that's on Instagram. And on uh, Facebook, you can reach me at Alan Adjusters um, on Instagram and Facebook. And I do have a website called um, Alan, AlanAdjusters.info. And I also have a website called LifeTransform.info as well. I love, love, love this conversation. And in our last minute, I want you to give a 30-second bit of advice to those who are married, those who desire to be married, and especially those who are about to walk down the aisle. Okay. Okay. Um, basically, I would I would say that those of those people that are desiring to be married, make sure that you um, understand that it's about commitment. It's not just about a feeling. Because sometimes the commitment, um, it's not it's not about feeling. It's about commitment. So make sure that the person that you're choosing to marry, that you can commit to them. The person that is married, I would say, listen, fight for your fight for your marriage. I wore camouflage shirt and DJ got on camouflage pants <laughs> because um, it's going to be a fight and you have to fight to win. You have to be strategic and you have to make sure that you are not looking at your spouse as an enemy, but somebody that you need to defend. And um, those people that are um, looking to get married, just listen, be patient and make sure you prepare yourself well. Yeah. And I would just add, I mean, I agree with all that. Have fun yes. at every stage. Jesus. It is so important to enjoy, live life, marriage, um, preparing to be married, being married, all of that. It comes yeah. with a lot of challenges, but we need to focus on not always the challenges, but like the enjoying it. So enjoy the journey That's and good. have fun. It's so important to have fun. That's good. We just good stuff, guys. I thank you so, so very much. I thank everybody for tuning in. If you just tuned in, you're tuning into Love Lessons. We're here every Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the New You Nation Network YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning into Love Lessons. Remember, happy spouse, happy house. We'll see you <laughs> next week. Peace and blessings.